Amen. Can you thank God for what he's doing? Thank you, worship team. Wow. Wow. I have completely made a mess of my glasses, and I wondered if I could get a beautiful assistant to help me right now. I, my, there is all kinds of crud on those things now, so I won't be able to see notes. I barely use them anyway, but it doesn't matter. So I, let me just say this. If you walk in this place and you're brand new, uh, we're a mess, y'all. Okay, I'm just telling you, uh, he walked into, he, you walked into some family time. You walked into some family time. How many, how many, how many know sometimes families are a mess, right? Right, right? Okay, why don't, you, why don't we just own it today, right now? Okay, for everybody who's watching online is a little shocked by uh, this introduction uh, of, of, of our family to yours. We just like to say we're a mess, okay? Can we say that? We're a mess, okay? It's okay. Okay, uh, we walk in this place all the time. God's presence, God's presence meets us where we are. And sometimes where we are is messy and has got to work it out. And you know what? It's okay for you to be a mess. It's okay. You know why? Because we have a king. You, you might be... You might be walking in some pain and some sorrow and some challenges. Listen, uh, as, a, as a family, do you know that this past week, as a family of God, we have people who are hurting over what's happening in our country. We have people who are celebrating what's happening in our country. We have people who are, 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 are can't wait and people who are, whoa, please stop and, and, and everything in between. And listen, we're a family. And it's okay for you to be you and a family, right? It's okay. I mean, it's not okay to hurt other family. That's not okay. That's not okay. But it's okay to be a mess. <laughs> because God meets us there. Because we have a king who's also a father. Because when we talk about being a kingdom family, we've been in a series called Family Ties, okay? And in that Family Ties series, we've starting into this next phase and, and the final chapter here is what it looks like to be a kingdom family. And today I want to talk to you about how God is a God of increase and in the kingdom, the kingdom is always increasing. The kingdom's always advancing. That's why it says anyone who puts her hand to the plow of the kingdom, in that illustration Jesus said, here's what the kingdom's like. It's a man who puts his hand to the plow, but if he looks back, he's not worthy of the kingdom because the kingdom is always advancing forward, never retreating, never standing on its laurels of looking back and saying, well, this is what God did before, and, and so... That's what he'll only do. No, that's religion. Just keep repeating the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then uh, that's because that's what happens. So we're just, we're, we're anchored. We're anchored to God. And God says uh, through the prophet Isaiah, behold, I'm doing a new thing. Can you perceive it? Because the kingdom of heaven is always doing something new. It's always moving forward. It's always bringing increase. And if you want to be in the kingdom of fa in this family kingdom with a king who's always moving forward, then we need to be a family who's on the move. We need to be a family who steps into that. But we also need to be a family who's not anchored back here in what holds me back into what God desires for me, but not just for you. See, here's the problem. Can I just tell you what holds us back in this conversation and about the conversation we're about to have in Matthew chapter 25? If you want to look there ahead of time, you're going to go, uh-oh. Okay, but Matthew chapter 25, Jesus is talking. Well, don't put it up there yet, but uh, just a surprise, okay? All right, that's just for them, the, 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 eager, the eager, eager students. You stay with me, not them, okay? Uh, so, <laughs> but you, listen, what holds us back in the conversation we're about to have is oftentimes the same question that all of our country asks about everything and most, most of our world. What's in it for So that's why when preachers talk about money, 
we go with them. If you've been a follower of Jesus for a while, like, oh, yeah, I believe in that, Pastor. But we love the part when he gets to what's in it for. Oh, we love the increase for me, right? But let me tell you, what God is saying about his kingdom is that everything in his kingdom is his. And everything that's his, he brings increase. So we go, ooh, I like the sound of that. That means I'm in his kingdom. That means I'm going to get increased. That means it's for me. I'm so excited. What's he going to get me? We're like little kids at Christmas. Oh, I wonder what he's going to get me. I wonder what he's going to get me. I wonder what he's going to get me. Oh, I bet he's going to get me that. I bet he's going to get me that. I can just feel it. I deserve it. I need it. I mean, I won't say that out loud, but I do. And we're like little kids um, coming to the king uh, with our requests. And he's going, do you think it's hard for me to grant that? I, I've been watching The Chosen. Everybody uh, love The Chosen with me. I, I'm re-watching it, y'all, because it's just so good. It's so good. Uh, I've been re-watching The Chosen. And, and I love it. I love it when they're all worried and all stressed out and like, what's going to happen? And the Romans come and get them. And, the, and the, what's happening? And, and, and Jesus is not worried. <laughs> He's not worried. Remember last week, seek first the kingdom of God. You don't look at the fields. Look at the flowers of the fields. Look at the birds of the air. You think that God doesn't take care of everything that you need? Just seek first his kingdom. He's a God of increase, but we need to learn what it means to handle the increase, the gifts that God gives. So I want to talk to you today what Jesus' words from this perspective. I preach on this sermon. I preach on this passage often, and I never preach on it the same way. I didn't look back at the other one. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Please do. That would be wonderful. That would mean that that would be amazing to me because... <laughs> <laughs> because, not just because I love when that happens, but not, uh, I'm being sarcastic, but here's what I do. I mean, it would be incredible, like, if you like, hey, yeah, actually, 10 years ago, Pastor, you preached something like, what? Who knows, who knows a sermon from 10 years ago? I know, that would be amazing. But every time it's different, because God is always doing something new. So I'm, I'm telling you how raw this is for me and how God's speaking, that I need to learn, I need to learn what it is to receive God's gifts and his increase. And, and what should I do? The first thing he talks about is this. Make sure his gifts are managed, not owned. Oh. You say, well, that's not really a gift. Well, actually, it is a gift. It is yours to do anything you want to do with it. But Jesus actually talks and tells this story. He tells this story of what he desires for you when he gives you a gift and that you, dece that you discover and not be deceived. You discover what it looks like to manage that and steward that for the king. Because this is how you walk in increase. Again, it will be like a man. The kingdom of heaven will be like a man going on a journey. Who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold. To another two bags. And to another one bag. Each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey the man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. And also the one who gave two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Jesus gives us an illustration to say this. I want to give you... I want to give you things. I want to give you so much. Bags of gold. Oh, we love the bags of gold. Lord, that would be so amazing. That would be so incredible. 
What Jesus is saying, you can do whatever you want with this gift. You can do anything you want. My child, come here. Dad wants to talk to you. I got a gift for you. I want to give this to you, and I want you to know you can do anything you want. You're in charge. You're in charge. Some parents in the room are going, this is bad parenting. I would not do this with my child, okay? Okay, okay, but, but you know what? You know each child, don't you? Do you give the same exact thing to every single child? Now, I know you do on Christmas, to be fair. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about the public things. I'm talking about the little private little moments that you have as a mom or a dad. If you're a mom or a dad in this room, you know what I'm talking about. That every, if you have multiple children, you know that everyone is unique and everyone's spoken to differently, receives things differently, receives gifts differently. You know what they're going to do. Do you know that God as a father knows that even greater? This is not a contest to see who has the greatest ability. Well, the greatest manager I gave the five to, but the not-so-good manager I'm giving the two, and you're just getting the one. He's giving you gifts because he knows you so well. He knows exactly what you are ready for and what you right now in this moment could walk in, increase, if you would just manage, if you would make sure that you're managing what God gives you, and the first step of managing what God gives you is to be okay with whatever God gives you, right? Because if you're not, you're not managing when you're moping. And you got some mopers in a house? You don't like the job I gave you. Okay, okay. Well, I'm sorry you don't like raking the leaves, okay? And your brother's over there. He's bagging the leaves, and that job looks so much more fun to you. And then, right, right, well, I'm not going to let, if you were the parent, like, okay, you know what the lesson's coming. You know what's going to happen, right? What are you going to do? Okay, switch. Now, guess what? The moper doesn't like the other job either. Right? That job's not so easy either, okay? Because the moper wanted to just not do a job. And the problem is when God gives us gifts, we start going, oh, what about the other gifts? Oh, but this isn't exactly what I needed. And God, do you, are you sure you got it right? Because God desires to give you a gift. And the first step in managing is to make sure that you're okay with the gifts he's given you. God is, has trusted you with exactly what you can manage right now. He's trusted you with what you can manage. I, I'm, I don't know if you've ever seen the series uh, um, Alone. <laughs> I knew there was a reason why I stopped watching it. I, I don't watch it either, but I'm just saying... Nobody should watch it. I don't know. No, it's just a story. It's just this, it's a, a thing that came on one of our streaming things that did a season where they put them out in the middle of the nowhere in the wilderness and they drop them with nothing. Right? And you, you've heard your mom's old phrase, waste not. Right? Okay. Every, watching these people, the thing that stuck out to me, when I watch these people be dropped in the middle of nowhere, okay, first of all, I'd be dead in like one day, okay? <laughs> I'd be like, all right. I mean, the hunting part looks really cool. But then the fact that as they get to like day five and miss after miss or after moment, and you got to go pick up your arrows and all this stuff, it's like every resource you have to create, you got to make your own arrows, you got to do all this. I was like, no, no, no. I want you to put me in a tree stand, tell me exactly where, can you make sure the deer gets exactly here at this spot? And can it be a little more comfortable? It's a little too cold, a little too hot, a uh, little thing. Can you set this up exactly right uh, so that I can have an experience? Okay, I just want to experience it one time. Can you set it all, just curate it just perfectly for me? No, this is nuts. These people are crazy. They get dropped off in the middle of nowhere, and they have to live off of everything, which means when you're starving, you will find the nutrients in some weird plant. Okay, I don't want to be that hungry. Then I'm going and gathering, like, picking stuff off of bushes, boiling them in a pot and pretending it's soup. <laughs> I, I mean, we watch people do desperate stuff like, like 
boil leather, the leather belt. Like, I guess, you know, the belt, you know, just didn't, like, I'm sure if they got too skinny and then the belt doesn't work anyway. And so he's, like, cutting off pieces of the belt that don't work and boiling the belt. And then, like, he's explaining it to the camera. I think there's some oils in the belt and there's going to be some things that come out of it. There could be some nutrients. I don't know, but I'm just going to try it because I'm going to die. <laughs> Here's the amazing thing. God gives you so much excess. So much more than you actually need. You are playing with such a stacked deck. Oh, don't even make me do the statistics around the world and let you show how you actually, the one percent, everybody keeps talking about right now, the one percent, the elite, the one, that you are it. Just look at the world. Just look. If you look at the world and stop looking at just one country, the wor- you are it. We are have so much that God's given us. This isn't to make you feel guilty. This is to help you understand that you serve a God as a father who's given you so much and he wants to give you more because he's a God of increase and he can't wait, but he's wondering, how are you managing what I gave you so far? How's that going for you? How are you managing it? This is why it's so critical to take financial classes, to learn to learn how to, to increase, to learn how to invest, to learn how to, to not spend, but invest. There's a difference. This is 101, right? <laughs> okay. If you didn't know that, there's, there you go. Here's your first lesson, okay? There's a difference between spending and investing, right? There's a di- saving for what? There are goals, that financial goals. This is why it's so critical that we deceive. And here's why. Not so that we're wealthy. That's the what is in it for me story. So that we see the kingdom of heaven finally increase. We're wondering, why doesn't revival come? Why doesn't revival? We need revival. We need revival. We need revival. We need people to go. We need more people to just, we need to see it. We need to see it. We need to see it. How are we doing with what we have? How are we doing with that? How are we managing the resources that God has given us? This is not just a gift that is given. It is a gift that is given with responsibility. These were the servants, and he said, I'll give it to you, and you can do anything you want. If you want to bury it in the ground, that's what one servant chose. If you just want to bury it in the ground and do nothing with it, that's up to you. But it's also on you. Because as stewards, as managers, make sure the gifts that God's giving are managed. And secondly, there's accountability that comes with this, okay, Matthew 25. Make sure that the gifts that God gives are not only managed, but they're measured. That they're measured. Verse 19. After a long time, the master of those servants returned. The parents came home, right? <laughs> Is the work been done? Oh no. You hear the cars drive up. I remember my dad would be pulling up the drive, pulling up. We had a long driveway, okay? We had a long driveway. It was like one of them country, uh, when we lived out in the country, we had a long driveway. And you'd, you'd get the, it was like census radar or something. And you'd and forget what you were doing. And all, all of a sudden, the list of your responsibilities came to the front of your mind. Miraculously, as dad's work truck hit the bottom of a one-mile driveway, I would miraculously discover I think there were some things I was supposed to do today. And then suddenly get very busy in that very short amount of time. From the time the truck hit the bottom of the hill to the time the truck got to the bottom of the hill, let me tell you, I looked busy. It's like when the boss walks in the room, right? You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't been, I'm, I've not been standing here for the last 30 minutes gossiping at the water cooler. I have not. I've been busy. We've been in a meeting, and now, now, now that's done. Thank you for that. I'll get right on that. We become, right? We get experts at, like, finishing a conversation with, like, did you hear that he was, a, like, and someone else walks in the room, you're like, thank you. That is so good. I like that. I'm going to get right on that. Hey, I'm so busy. I'd love to keep talking, but I got to go. 
See, there's accountability that comes with what God gives us. It's measured. So he comes back to settle the accounts with them. And the man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me. You entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant, because what God holds you accountable to is not for him, it's for you. This is the difference between your boss and a heavenly father. There's lots of them, but this is just the one, okay? (laughs) It's because our God gives us gifts for us, and this is a moment for them to step into a celebration, and what could be a celebration for many ends up being a disappointment. Not from him, though. (laughs) If you see this perspective today, if you see this perspective today, I promise you that not me, but your heavenly father is going to set you free in your finances. Don't start thinking about what you're going to buy with your free finances. That's the wrong story. That isn't this one. Jesus said that I'm coming back and there'll be a time to settle accounts and I want it to be a celebration with you. I'm celebrating whatever it is that I've given you to celebrate what you've done with it if you've done something. Because he's a God of increase and he's a God of celebrating increases. And so the man with two bags of gold came, Master, I... You entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, well done. Good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Now, here's the amazing thing. If you need to share happiness, was he mad before or happy before? He's already happy. And he desires for you to share in his happiness because he loves when he gives a gift and he sees it multiply. It's the same way when someone gives you a gift and you turn it into a business and your dad would be pass out on the floor, faint and go, what? This is crazy. Are you kidding me? I gave that for you. I gave that, I gave that toy for you and now you're like wanting to build them and sell them at school. That's amazing. You're incredible. I, I'm so, I was already happy to give you the gift. I already told you you could do whatever you want with it. But now this is what you did with it. This is what you did. You use, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. I'll never forget one of the proudest moments ever. There were many, but my first one, my first one, was in our first preschooler taking toys to preschool, and we didn't know why. We didn't know why. And then they, he didn't come back with them, so we were like, there is some stuff going on at this school. I'm going to talk to this teacher. No, we didn't do that. My wife's a teacher. She never does that, okay? She's always like, teacher's right. She's amazing. You're not right, okay? <laughs> You know what I'm talking about, those teaching us. What, what did he do again? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So I was wondering where I was. Okay, so we, they kept disappearing. And so our proudest, one of the proudest moments, you know what's going to happen. You already know the end of the story. Because you know what was happening with those gifts, right? What was he doing with them? He's giving them away. Wait, hold on. What did you, what did, he's What? Selling them. Oh, Oh, now that, come on, that's next level right there. That's next level feedback. Jesus, take the wheel. This is the kind of people I'm preaching to, the love of the word and just calling out better, Pastor. It could have been a better thing that you said. Well, okay, but that wasn't how it happened, but all right. I like that. (laughs) Let me tell you, 
God has given us so much. He's given us so much. And he just wants you to step into his happiness. I can't wait to see it. I cannot wait to see it. I got to move on because that's, that's how badly I can't wait to see it. This is what, you wonder what help, help a preacher pass, uh, preach faster? This is it because I can't wait to see it. See, now, God gives us tools to help us, right? All throughout Scripture, all throughout the Old Testament, he gives us these tools. Uh, and then the New Testament, Jesus affirms them all because Jesus talks about money all the time. And in this tool, lots of them, he gives us ways to give, disciplines of giving. Uh, whatever, whatever discipline you want to, to talk about, that he gives disciplines of giving throughout all of Scripture. Like one example is the tithe. It's just a, one example of, of God giving a tool, an instrument, a, a way for us. And in the Old Testament, Malachi 3.10, um, it just talks about bringing. It started in the Old Testament as a way for a community to come and bring to the synagogue that they were receiving from. And whichever one, that storehouse, they would bring, okay, a tenth, a tenth of their crops they would bring to that storehouse. Why did God do that? Because 10% is the number that God, no, because he wanted to give you a tool. So it wasn't for God that he created these tools. It was for you to learn to trust him because a part of what happens when we measure is we've been measuring the wrong thing. We're measuring our bank accounts and God's going, Crack me up. Your little bank account with your little balance. That's so cute. Look at you. Look at you playing house with your little house down there with the you got you're so happy. Look at you playing hot wheel cars with the little cars and oh I want to get a better car. Oh God's blessing me. Oh God's blessing me with a really good car. And God's like, oh, oh, look at you. That is so adorable. That's so cute that you just want to like celebrate. That's awesome. You know what? Step into a moment of increase and understand that there is heaven to measure, not just earth. You've been measuring the wrong thing in this conversation. If you're not managing it, you don't get this because part of management is the management tools that he gave you in management class. And when you go back to what management 101, it was like, okay, everything is God's. It's not mine. I'm going to manage it for him. I'm going to step into increase. And when you walk into that, you walk into the celebration of what should be measured instead of measuring what all your friends are measuring and measuring what everybody at work's measuring and measuring what you think you have, and you start to measure what heaven can have. Now you just want the kingdom to be built. Now you're stepping into increase. Oh, man, we talk about, but I think they're important tools. They're important tools so because, I mean, in that Old Testament illustration, this is the one time right at the beginning in Malachi 10 where he says, hey, go ahead, test me on this. Test me. Measure me. You want to measure something? Measure me. Go ahead and set aside, just as an illustration, set aside a tenth of everything that you bring to the storehouse, to your local synagogue, to your, the place where you're receiving. Go ahead and just go ahead and test me on this. And he says this through Malachi the prophet, see if I won't open up heaven and pour out. Pour it out. I mean, see, it. just go ahead, test me. Test me. I will open up heaven and pour it out. Now, if you hear, pour it out for me, fill up my bank account, then you didn't get the management. Okay? What he's pouring out is heaven on earth. What he's pouring out is heaven on earth. And you know what? If you've been trusted with something and you invested it in the kingdom of heaven, guess what he's going to do? Oh, I know that servant. I can totally trust her. I can totally trust him. I'm stepping into more. I'm stepping into increase. I'm giving more. And you know what's going to happen to the kingdom? Not these little tiny bank accounts, these little cars, these little, these little things that we have and little vacations we take. No, no, no. God's going to say the kingdom has come because of you. That is a measured manager that I want to step into in family 
And there's, there's, here, let me give you some, have, who, who likes practical? Raise your hand, you like practical. Okay, it was way more than I expected. All right. I don't know how you guys put up with me, the practical party uh, in the family. Let me give you three practical words. They all start with P. Write these down. Priority. Priority. That's a helpful thing. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Priority. Just whatever you're going to give, make give it first. I'm not even going to talk about amounts. I'm not even going to talk about 10%, 12%, 15%, whatever. I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm just going to say whatever tool, make sure you give it first. Give it first. And here's why. Trust God. Slide the chips across the table. Slide the food across the table and see if God won't open up heaven. Test him on this. God, I don't want me in the hands of debtors. I'm going to stop that. I'm going to not be a captive by that because I want more to invest for your kingdom. And suddenly we become managers who know what to measure and we can't wait to see heaven open up and we understand what it means. So we take it, make it a priority. So say priority. The next word is this, percentage. Here's, what, here's why. Because God doesn't care, like, if you give, like, uh, oh, honestly, somebody could give 10% in this room, 10% of income, live on 90%. <laughs> Your 90% is so much bigger than most people, 90%. You're just like, okay, God's blessed you. God is giving you gifts. 10% is literally not a big deal for you. You don't sweat 10%. That's not a big deal. But somebody in here is like, I sweat 1%. I don't, it's a faith of God, act of God. I'll put to 1%. Okay, the point is, is to figure out, measure, if you want to increase something, you need to know what you're already doing. Right? So it's just practical. Practical help. I want you this week. Just, if you're married, you and your spouse, if you're, uh, if it's just you, praise God, you can just go and make the decision. Like, <laughs> that's awesome. But you know what? Uh, you're going to make that, whoever you are, you're going to make the decision with God. And you're going to trust him because he's entrusted you. And if he's entrusted you, it takes trust to walk in. And so I measure whatever percentage it is. But if, it, if I make $1,000 and I'm giving $100, how much percentage is that? You don't know either? Okay. <laughs> I did not know there would be math in this sermon. I was not signed. I have not signed. Am I in the wrong room? Is there another service you can send me to to the non-mathematical people? That would be the one that I would be right for. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate that. But whatever you fi just figure out the percentage. If you don't know how to figure out percentages, they got calculators. It's really easy. You just put in your total income. You divide it, something, do something, and you push a button, <laughs> and then they, and then that little thing just pops up with that number, and it's like point something, and you move the decimal point. Okay. But if you don't know what you're doing, how can you measure it? Here's, so priority, say priority. Percentage, say percentage. The third one is be progressive. That whatever amount you're at, pray for increase. I'm going to explain why in a moment, because everybody's freaking out. Like, whoa, I was already having a hard time, and now, now he's talking about giving more, okay? I'm going to explain why in just a second. I already did, but if you didn't catch it in the passage, I'm going to try to explain it. So it means if you're giving, if you, if you do all the math and you figure out you're giving 1%, Okay, well, what if you gave 2%? If you did all the math and you figured out you're uh, doing 5, what if you did 6 or 7 or 8? If you figured out all the math and you're doing 10, you hadn't even thought about it for a while maybe, and just on, it's on automatic, what if you did 12? What if you... Well, here's the what if. The what if isn't I will open up heaven and fill up your bank account. <laughs> your bank account, oh, dear Jesus, this is a word from the Lord. God wants you to know this. This is word from God. 
God says your bank account is overflow from what I'm already doing in the kingdom. It should be overflow. It's overflow. Because where I want to go, <laughs> I'm going, I'm, I'm moving forward, and I'm building the kingdom of heaven, and where I want to go, <laughs> I can't wait for you to I can't wait for you to see this because you want to see people coming to Jesus in, in, in around you, friends coming to Jesus. This is what we're seeing in our church right now. This is what we're seeing. People coming to Jesus. You want to see more of that? Oh, I got so much more of that to those who would manage and measure what I've given them. I've got so much more of the kingdom and your bank accounts will just be an overflow of you living in the kingdom of God because my bank account's way bigger. <laughs> That's nothing to me. If you are a servant that I can trust because you've, I've entrusted you with this much. And here's my last thing. Not with a good, here's what we need to do with God's gifts. Is we, we need to manage, we need to measure, but we can't miss this. Don't let it be said that I missed. Don't let it be said of verse 24. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown, gathering where you have not scattered seeds. So I was afraid. And went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. See, the amazing thing, if this was just a sermon about everything belongs to God, the last servant totally gets it. And we'd be like, what? What's the problem? It's God's. Here it is. You return exactly what you gave me. Except we have a heavenly father who wants so much more for you that he taught the lesson of what the servant is like and what he's actually missing so that you and I can walk in increase because he's a loving father that doesn't want you to miss this. He doesn't want you to see him the way the servant sees his father. Pastor T our, our Tony Fitzgerald spoke about it right at the beginning of our series, we talked about the heart of a father. He talked about the heart of the father, his life message. He came and shared that with us in the kingdom of heaven. And this is what it is. And, and he used this passage as an illustration of how we miss it. And I think it's so beautiful. And I think it's so important that we don't miss this. What he said, I knew that you are a hard man. If your perspective of God, if you miss the perspective of God as your king and the loving father that he is, his kingdom will sit in the ground with you. Because you see it as some kind of religious rule that I've been placed on me that I have to do. And, and, and if I don't do it, then I've missed it or I'm in trouble. And, and, and God's like... <laughs> You missed it. You missed it. That isn't who I am. That's not what I want for you. Does God want you to be afraid that if you don't give, this could happen? No. But when something happens, we go, maybe it's because I stopped giving. If you've been in a church for a long time, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And it means our perspective needs to be shifted in the kingdom of heaven. It needs to be shifted to a loving father who meets us exactly where they are. And listen, I'm asking us as a church, I'm asking us as a church to, to do something. I, I've got cards here that we're just going to use a tool. This is just a tool. But it's a way to measure the increase for us as a, as a group of people as a called out group of people that are walking together in family, we get to measure what God's doing. This is not to write down your income. This is not write to, to write down what you're giving. This is to write down one thing. I'm not giving anything, and here's the something I'm giving. 
or I'm giving something, and here's the something more. And the only thing we want to measure is exactly what heaven's measuring in this illustration, is whatever the increase is, we're going to celebrate what the increase is. And, and, and listen, I want you to take this. It's not a, I'm going to psych you up and then sign it up, and then I'm going to regret the number. No, 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 no. I'm telling you to take this home and pray. Pray to the Lord of the harvest. Pray to the one who wants to pour out blessing on this city. Pray to the one who had 1,400 teenagers packed in this room on this weekend. 1,400 teenagers coming to Jesus and praying and worshiping their hearts out. What if those 1,400 teenagers could become 28? What if that's just, and that's around our whole state. What if there were 1,400 teenagers in Richmond, Virginia that wanted to get together and worship God? Could you believe him for that? Could you entrust him for that? Let me tell you, he's not interested in filling your bank account. That's just an overflow. He's interested in filling heaven. And when he fills up heaven, he'll open it all up and give it all because he'll say, I found some servants in Richmond, Virginia that I can entrust with this. I'm entrusting them. You saw, you, we've been celebrating one or two people coming to Jesus every single week. People come to Jesus. We got connections for our discipleship class and, and, then, and then the fellowship after that and then following Jesus. We've got all these levels of people walking with Jesus and we celebrate that. What if it was double, triple? quadruple what if what if our kids we celebrate our kids ministry around here isn't our kids ministry amazing what if we instead of a hundred kids what if we had said hundred you had 200 or 300 or 400 and it's not about numbers no it isn't it's about increase that God desires for him in his kingdom and he wants you to be a part of it he don't want doesn't want you to miss it that's what it's about So often I've missed it. I don't want us to be that family who misses it. I want to see more outreach happen. I got to be there Tuesday night as they were packing the boxes to feed thousands of families, right? How many people are like, so can you celebrate thousands of people coming and receiving? The, because, you know, the gospel is not just the message of Jesus. It is the provision of Jesus. And I got to be there with all these families and children and all different ages. And, and they were packing. Thank God for uh, JJ and his leadership. And thank God for uh, what he's doing. And thank you. God, for the increase that you're doing, but what if there were 10, 20, 30, 40? You just keep going and going and going because just go ahead and test me. Just test me on this. God's like, you can't wait for some managers who start measuring heaven instead of earth and start walking and not miss this anymore. We're not digging it in the ground, not holding on to what we have. Oh, let's celebrate what we did and keep doing it. Let's make sure we never stop doing it, Pastor, never stop doing it. No, that's hiding it in the ground. You know what I want my children to do and their children, you want my granddaughter to do? You know what I want to do? I want her to change everything about the way I do things. And I want to hate it. I want it to be so different that I'm like, oh, uh, But you know what? Here's my granddaughter. You know my granddaughter can do? Anything she wants is the answer. It's our heavenly father. And the next generation can build whatever God puts on their heart to build it. We will celebrate it. We will celebrate it. We'll see kids ministry, We're not, not just in kids ministry, we'll see them out taking about and reaching lost people for Jesus and amongst eight young in their elementary schools. We're seeing it now in this much. What if we were seeing it in this much? We're seeing it in our high schools. Our teenagers are taking over because the kingdom of heaven has come. But what if more of them were doing it? What if we were able to do more outreach? What if we were able to do more? That is the increase that heaven desires for us to measure and not miss this today. I'm going to invite our worship team out for time for us just to pray and respond. Here's what I'm going to ask you to respond. There's some cards up here. And they say, hey, we want to celebrate this with you. So I want you to take this home and pray. If, if, and listen, if God spoke to you already and you already know, then great. Praise God. There's a, there's a QR code on the front. You can do this digitally if you want. But then you on the front, then you just mark. On the back, you just mark, I, I gave it digitally. And because we're going to collect these. 
I want you to hold on. I want you to put this on your desk. I want you to put this in your Bible. Uh, if you don't read your Bible, don't put it there. You won't see it, okay? I want, you to, I want you to put it somewhere. I want you to, you know what? Put it on the mirror, okay? Put it on the mirror at your house, okay? That's where my wife puts all the scripture. I can't even see myself. Like, can I move Psalms a little bit, honey? Because I need to, because I just need to shave, okay? I've cut myself six times because you want to read the Psalms right now. Anyway, um, you just <laughs> put it somewhere you're going to see it. Pray over it and say, God. I don't want to miss this. And, and then in, and we're going to collect these all next week. We're going to collect these on the 17th. We're going to collect all these. And whether you gave digitally or you gave on this piece of paper, we're going to collect it. If you're giving, if you're online watching right now, you can be a part of this. Okay? You can go to our website and you can, you can measure your increase and say, here's my increase. We're not interested in what your, what your total giving is. We're interested only in celebrating as a family. What if we celebrate as a family? Then on the 24th, we're going to get together and we're going to throw a party and say, this is the increase that God is bringing from heaven. This is the increase that we can believe for, that we can see God work and we can measure what heaven's going to do when he pours out his blessing. Right now, would you stand with me? God, I can't wait to see what you're going to do. Maybe you've been walking and hearing the sermon and you're like, I can't believe I heard a sermon on giving. and I'm not even sure I believe any of this. And this is the perfect Sunday. And the person that brought you is like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Because ultimately... What Jesus wants is just wants to be your father. He doesn't care about you giving nothing ever. He doesn't need your money. <laughs> this isn't for him. This is for you. And if that's you, if that describes you, and it's like, hey, I'm not sure if I'm walking with Jesus, but I'm going to invite Jesus into my life, and I'm going to be a follower of Jesus. I might have believed in Jesus before. I've heard of him. I believe in him. I might have even grown up in church. But you say, today, I'm becoming a follower. You know what the only thing that matters to the Father right now is not you filling out one of these cards. It's you filling out and coming, filling up heaven and saying, I'm a follower of Jesus. And Sue and I, are, I'm going to meet you. Not Sue, but I'm going to meet you right here. She's got something else to do in a second. I'm going to meet you right here. I want to pray a prayer, simple prayer with you, no magic in it. But if you you want to become a follower of Jesus today, I want to meet you and pray. Maybe some of you are holding on to something, and you're, this wor this sermon worries you. God gets that. I wonder if you could trust Him today with it, and just take a card and pray. So. Hey, there's cards up front. Maybe you want to mark this moment and you want to make it a spiritual moment and you want to walk down here and you want to collect. You're making it a spiritual moment. I'm going to take this. I'm going to say a prayer over it right now at the altar and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to take this home and pray over at home. If you're like, I'm not walking up there. Well, we got cards in the back on tables all over the back as well. Okay. But we just want you to pray. This is 100% participation. Nobody should leave here without one unless you just don't want to even pray about it. And that's okay. If that's where you're at, come meet me and let's pray about it. That's okay. I want to meet you right up here. Come and pray. Let's see what God does in his increase.